Oh, man. So I watched a little movie called The Last Days of American, American Crime. Uh, it's an action crime thriller directed by Olivier Megaton. And if anybody recognizes his name, he's um, he's the director of Taken 2, Taken 3, Transporter 3. Um, somebody, I, I read a review where somebody compared him as the... Uh, the Mr. Brainwash version of uh, of uh, Luke Besson, if Luke Besson was like Banksy, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, that's basically it." I get, I can completely, I completely understand that comparison. Uh, it is uh, written by Carl. Oh, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, Gadju Gadjusek, and it's uh, based oh, how's off. How does it feel? I know it's been a while, man. It's been a while, <laughs> and it's uh, based off of a graphic novel of the same name. So it takes place in the near future of 2025, and uh, the United States has basically run rampant with crime and domestic terrorism. So, because of this, the government has implemented a new nationwide security system called API, which stands for the American Peace Initiative, which basically emits a uh, radio signal that short-circuits a person's brain to keep them from committing anything they they know is uh, is wrong. So, like, say, like, I'm about to, like, steal candy, and I know it's wrong. Like, I'll, I'll just hear this sensor that will pretty much just, like, freeze me. And, uh, I guess until I get arrested, I, they never explain how you get out of it, but it, it's just kind of something that it just, either you get arrested and it just stops. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> so anyway, uh, our main character is Graham Brick, known as Brick. He's played by Edgar Ramirez. Uh, he's a renowned criminal of the city of insert city here. Cause I can't remember what city this place takes place in. Uh, it is, uh, and one day he's recruited by Kevin Nash, who's played by Michael Pitt, who I, I genuinely love. He's like one of those actors who was kind of like big back in the day and nobody really cast him in anything, but he like pops up every once in a while. And I, I love seeing him and his, uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's recruited by him and his fiance played by, um, Anna Brewster, who's, I believe is a model. Um, and basically their plan is to steal $1 billion from the U S mint and make their way to Canada before API begins. So. It's a pretty hefty plot, and it's a hefty plot for a movie that is uh, at a runtime of two hours and 30 minutes, which I really feel like it didn't need to be. <laughs> like, an hour and a half, I completely understand. Two hours, sure. Hour, two hours and 30 minutes just feels kind of like a slog fest. Um, and honestly, with, this, with the, what I'm leaving out is a lot of the many things throughout this plot. There, there's a brother of Brick who's, uh, whose death is labeled as a suicide, and really, it turns out he, he was uh, he was beaten to death. There's also a hit out on Brick for some reason. There was a there was a betrayal at the beginning of the movie, and that's not really ever brought back up again. Uh, there's a lengthy slide, side plot about a cop who's surprisingly enough played by Charlotte Copley from uh, District Nine and all those other movies. I don't know why he's here, but it, it was nice to see him. Um, his whole arc is about him, like you know, kind of adjusting to. The new API system as a cop, because it is one of those things where a lot of cops are pretty much losing their jobs because of it. And uh, either you can just, like, retire, get a good pension, or you will uh, you can basically uh, join what I think is just the API force, I'm just going to call it that, where they implant a little chip into your neck so that you're not affected by the API system and can, you know, still arrest people who are trying to commit crimes and things like that. Um... But yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of an interesting concept just to see like his perspective, but they don't really do anything with it, and it just kind of extends the runtime and it leads to really nothing. But once again, nice to see Charlotte Copley. Um, you know, if we're talking about the acting, I thought the acting was fine. Uh, Edgar Ramirez kind of just broods throughout the entire movie, it, uh, so it's not really anything special. But uh, he he does at times feel like he's he's pulling his weight. I, I do think the best actors in this movie are actually. Brewster and Copley, I, I think they they are not, you know, I wouldn't call them fantastic, but, like, I think they actually do a pretty good job of what they're given. The one that surprised me is uh, Michael Pitt. He was kind of a mixed bag for me. Like I said, I just, you know, said earlier that I genuinely like when he pops up in movies. I, I really love his performance on the show. Um, oh, my God, what was that show that Martin Scorsese produced um, that, uh, what's his face is on? Uh, oh, my God. Uh, Need more specifics. Uh, HBO show, uh, crime, blah, uh, oh my god. It's not Perry Mason. That's a new show. No, that's just coming out. Oh my god. I don't know. We're going to pause the review until we figure this out because it's bothering no, you, me. No, you do your thing. I'll look this up. All right. Um, Steve Buscemi's on it. Anyway. 
Oh, Boardwalk Empires? Boardwalk Empire! Thank you! Oh, I could not, for okay. the life of me, pull his, pull that show's name, because I've never finished it. That's yeah, no, he's on Boardwalk list. Empire, and when he's on it, he's, he's fantastic. Anyway, uh, yeah, so when he first shows up on screen, I, I actually enjoyed his performance. It, it kind of reminded me of a drugged-up version of the Joker. Um, he's pretty much just like, he, he's like if, if, um, if Kurt Cobain was still alive and still on heroin. That's kind of what it reminded me of, and I oh and I dug God, it. What a horrible simile! It, it, it's a horrible simile. It is funny enough. I think Michael Pitt played Kirk Cobain in a movie once, if by uh, Gus Van Sant, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I mean, really? it's just yeah, yeah. It, it, like they never say that the character's name is uh is is Kirk Cobain, but it's definitely supposed to be Kirk Cobain. Um, but yeah, so like it, it reminded me of that, and I I enjoyed it. But then after a while, I guess because the movie is two hours and thirty minutes. It started to grate on my nerves a bit. It almost became the best comparison I have is it almost became Jared Leto's Joker at times, and okay, maybe not that bad, but still pretty bad. Like it was, it was still bothering me for a good amount of the movie. And then there's one scene where uh, his character, because it turns out that it's revealed that he's the son of this uh, big crime lord in the city. Uh, and in fact, I think it's the same crime lord that has the hit out on Brick. And they confront him because they they basically need like uh, these like you know, these bombs from him. He's like the only person you can you can uh, you get uh, get them from because he's the only resource. And he like confronts his dad, and they get like to this big argument. And his like sisters there, and they're just screaming at each other like children, like like borderline. And it was like I mean, basically okay. <laughs> like. <laughs> it, it was so weird, and it like it was so different from the rest of the movie. It it was some of the worst acting I think I've seen this year. It was really really bad. Like that that actress in particular. No offense, but oh my god. So um, <laughs> no offense, but you're no, terrible. Your no job. offense, but you were you were terrible in the five <laughs> minutes that you were in this movie. Jeez, <laughs> sorry. Um. I hope you. I hope you do better. Anyway, no uh, offense, Eric. Like, there's no point of that. Fair. She doesn't listen to this. It no point out she's that a, you turns, smell. Turns out stuff she's a like big, that. Turns out she's a big fan of the podcast, <laughs> and I just get death threats. Well, anyway. okay. Criticizing is different than saying. In criticizing is different than insulting. <laughs> yeah, we have I'm not bar- saying you should never work again. I was just here. saying I did not like your performance in this movie. Um... <laughs> But yeah, no, I really wanted to like this movie more because I I I, I like the world that it sets up. I like this this almost uh, not quite cyberpunk future. Like it hasn't gone full Ultra Carbon or Blade Runner. It's really dusty. I, I I looked it up. They shot this movie in Johannesburg, so like it's almost like everywhere is like the slums in District Nine, but like you know there's still bars and stuff. Um, and and like I I dug the look of it. Like it looked cool and. I, I like the idea of, like, this crime-ridden world, but they just, it just feels like they really didn't do anything with it. Like I said, the plot gets is, is heavy-handed. There's a lot of things that really don't need to be in there. It's like they, they filled it up to the brim, and I understand it's a comic, and I'm sure these are all segments in the comic that are addressed in a better way, but I feel like for the movie, they're like, well, we'll just make it a two-hour and 30-minute movie, and we'll just stuff everything in there. That's not how you handle it. You, you, you pick and choose. You take the good things, and then you leave the rest out for people who want to go back and read the comic later. And maybe I'll do that. Maybe, like, the comic... I, I'm assuming the comic's better. Um, but, but, yeah, like, I, I think for me, it just it just felt bloated and left me with nothingness by the time the movie was over. Like, even, even like, by the point that they got to the heist that they're supposed to pull, which is in, like, the last 40 minutes, I forgot that there was a heist. <laughs> like, oh God. I, I forgot the overall <laughs> plot of the movie. And also... It, it takes about 80 minutes before we get, like, the first real action scene. Like, it, th- From the beginning movie, of the movie? From the beginning of the movie, I want to uh, say. Like, uh, well, there's, like, a there's like a three-minute scene where, like, he's, he, like, shoots two people that are trying to shoot him. And then he shoots one other guy. But, like, that's it. it, it it's, like, a nothing scene. It, it really just sets up the character. It's not like, it's not like there, was, there was effort put into it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah, it just left me... It left me wanting more, but also less. I guess is the best way that I can say about this movie. So, yeah, this one, I really, really wanted to like it, but it really really was not for me. Like I said, maybe the comic's better. Maybe I'll start reading that. But um, I'm, I'm feeling a one and a half out of five, dude. Like, I, 
it, it was I, I, it's left me with a bad taste in my mouth and it also left me with the question of how can a thing like api ever ever get greenlit when you have like white collar criminals and things like that and like like it, it, you know this is talking like from our current political situation but like you have corrupt people in high in high places who would absolutely say yeah this is a bad idea because i can't get away with certain things anymore but i have no I idea know. what you're talking about i don't think white collar criminals exist eric oh no yeah you're right no that's this fair. is a perfect society <laughs> <laughs>